to welcome. It is my distinct uh, privilege to welcome all of you, uh, laureates of the fourth uh, Codestria Center for African Studies, Basel Summer uh, School uh, in African Studies and Area Studies in Africa. Uh, we started uh, this institute in 2015, uh, and we've been able to run the institute every two years, uh, uninterrupted, uh, except for last year, uh, when we could not uh, run the institute for reasons that I believe are obvious to all of you uh, with the pandemic. Uh, unlike many other organizations that are a lot more versatile than Codestria, uh, we were not able to jump onto the virtual platform as quickly uh, as, uh, as, as, as is the case with other institutions. And uh, this is not for want of trying. Uh, it is for a whole range of reasons that I will explain uh, shortly. So I'm happy to be able to welcome all of you uh, to, the, uh, to the fourth edition of this institute. Uh, um, we had up to around 71 uh, participants signed on. Uh, I can see that uh, so far we are uh, roughly 40 five people online, uh, but it feels okay uh, to proceed uh, with that. And uh, I want to begin, uh, first of all, uh, by welcoming and uh, thanking uh, uh, Professor Elisio Makamo, uh, who uh, you can see uh, online. Uh, the idea of the Institute relates very much uh, to the work uh, that uh, Elisio as director for the center of African studies at uh, Basel University, uh, putting uh, in generating this idea. Uh, uh, but I believe Elisio will uh, accept uh, that uh, part of, of the logic of this institute and the partnership between the center and Codestria rests in the fact that he's a long time member uh, of Codestria. Uh, I believe having served uh, uh, previously on the Codestria Scientific Committee, but also having been effectively involved uh, in the work of the council over a period of time, uh, including, of course, editing uh, a book or two and publishing uh, with Codestria. And so I'm happy to welcome you, uh, Elisio, uh, to the session uh, as director of the Institute, but uh, I believe more importantly as a, a member of Codestria. I'm taking advantage to claim you, Elisio, so uh, you will hang in with me <laughs> for as long as I can do that. Uh, but also to welcome uh, our colleague, Professor La Ra Ralph Weber, Weber, who is uh, online also, and also a member of staff uh, at Basel University uh, in the Institute for European Global Studies. And I must mention that both uh, Ralph and uh, Elisio have participated in the Institute since its founding uh, as resource persons. Uh, and uh, it's not that we don't have people to bring in, it's because they bring a weight of experience, uh, but also an understanding of the area that we are working on. Uh, so it makes perfect sense for us uh, to have both of you uh, from a uh, uh, from Basel, joining us for the fourth edition uh, of the Institute. And I hope that uh, the laureates uh, who are joining us for this particular Institute uh, will enjoy and gain uh, from the Institute, perhaps in ways that uh, you may not have uh, anticipated. Uh, I'm trying to scan through my system uh, to see if I can uh, uh, see uh, our friend and colleague uh, uh, Professor uh, Sabello um, uh, Lovugasheni. Uh, uh, I, I wonder if, if he's online, can he flag himself up? I think my system is playing games with me. Um, for, for some reason, uh, I can't see him online. Uh, but if, if we do, I'm, I'm going to, to point uh, him out. Uh, Sabello is uh, joining us from uh, Bayreuth uh, University in Germany, and uh, uh, he's the chair of a 
epistemologies of the global south uh, at the university. Uh, I think an appointment that uh, we took up uh, close to two years ago, uh, having uh, viral from uh, uh, UNISA. Again, can I can I request that uh, you you switch off your mic, please? Uh, we can hear uh, lots of uh, noise in the background from our friend. Uh, yes, please. I can see you switch off. I was about to flag your name, which is not very good on my part. Uh, so uh, when Sabello joins, I'm going to 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 introduce him, and uh, I want to take a very quick moment to ask. Uh, if uh, Elicio uh, can uh, just say a word in addition to the introduction that I have given, uh, and I will also ask Raf to say the same, uh, just very briefly, and then when your time comes, you will have an even more elaborate introduction. And when Sabello comes, we'll ask him to introduce himself. Uh, Elicio, please. Um, thank you, uh, Godwin. Uh, Welcome to everyone uh, here. I'm uh, thrilled that uh, we have been able to put this together. Uh, like the executive secretary said, it was not easy because of the, uh, of the pandemic situation, but I'm glad that technology makes it possible for us uh, to, uh, to meet. This is a very important uh, summer school for the Center for African uh, Studies. Uh, we are very proud uh, to partner uh, with Cadesria uh, and uh, to do uh, this. Of course, uh, for me, it's a particularly uh, special situation because I am, uh, I mean, I am um, uh, the Center for African Studies, but I'm also Cadesria, like uh, Godwin said. Uh, so it's like I'm partnering uh, with myself, uh, which is uh, fine. Uh, I'm also happy uh, to welcome Lucy uh, Kirschlin, who is the chairwoman of the Omudili uh, Foundation. Unfortunately, her name uh, is not uh, there. She's got my name. Uh, so this is not schizophrenia. Uh, <laughs> It's it just that uh, I mean, there was some technical problem. Uh, and uh, so she was assigned uh, my name. And uh, of course, Lucy will then uh, address uh, us. Uh, I welcome her in particular because uh, this uh, summer school, as well as all the others that we organized, uh, is funded, were funded uh, by the Omodili uh, Foundation. And uh, in this connection, I, I have to say something that is sad. Uh, the foundation was headed uh, originally uh, by um, Noemi Steuer, uh, who also attended uh, the first three summer schools we had in uh, Dakar. And uh, unfortunately, she passed away due to illness. Uh, which was a major shock uh, to all of us here in Basel at the Center for African Studies. Everybody who worked with uh, Noemi uh, um, misses her a lot. Um, she was a wonderful person. She was a wonderful scholar and she was very committed uh, not only uh, to uh, research in Africa, partnership with Africa, but also, and in particular, uh, with uh, the work uh, that uh, we are doing uh, with Cadesria. So I just wanted to uh, let you know, those of you who do not know the, um, the relationship that the center has with the Omo Dele Foundation, uh, that uh, we are doing this uh, in a great sadness that we lost uh, a very good uh, colleague. I'm also happy that uh, uh, Ralph, as usual, has joined. Uh, and um, uh, Ralph is a great colleague. Uh, and uh, you will see from yourselves uh, that uh, if you don't learn from him, then you're probably hopeless uh, because he's, he's really great in what he does. Uh, he's a philosopher, political scientist, and uh, 
uh, all sorts of things. And um, uh, he's been a great factor in the success of uh, this uh, summer, uh, summer school. And of course, I'm also happy that uh, Sabelo uh, will be joining us and uh, he will be doing what uh, he's really good at. So addressing very topical issues concerning uh, decolonization, uh, the decolonization of knowledge and epistemologies of the global south and so on. So I'm very, very happy with that. And of course, I want to thank uh, Ibrahim Ohanda and his team uh, for, uh, for the organization. Uh, in spite of all the difficulties uh, that we had, uh, I think they have been great and I'm really looking forward uh, to this summer school. I hope uh, it will, we will be able to, to manage it in spite of all the technical problems that of course uh, might uh, arise. And finally, uh, of course, I have to thank uh, Codestria and uh, uh, in particular, the executive secretary, uh, Godwin Murunga. Uh, I really find uh, the work that you're doing, uh, Godwin, uh, extremely good. Uh, I know uh, how difficult it is uh, right now for Codestria. Uh, I, I know uh, the kinds of difficulties you are facing in uh, really uh, keeping that uh, ship uh, uh, right um, um, floating afloat. Uh, and uh, I, I see all the stuff that uh, Cadestria is doing and I'm really impressed, but at the same time, uh, really uh, proud uh, to be a member uh, of this council and uh, proud to give my contribution to the success of this organization, which is uh, for me, uh, the most important uh, scientific organization on our continent. So thank you very much. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Elisio. Uh, and uh, I, 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 I had already spotted uh, uh, Lucy. Uh, 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 it was a bit confusing with the name associated, uh, but thank you for clarifying that. Uh, I will come back to uh, Lucy shortly. Uh, but please, Raf, can you say something? Yeah, thank you so much. I'll, I will not steal a lot of time, but I just want to um, say that um, it's good to see you, Godwin, again. I would have loved to see you in, in Dakar, right? And everybody else also. And also thank you, Elisa, for this very embarrassingly flattering words that now put a lot of pressure on me, but we'll see. Um, my basic message is just to all of you that that this is one of my favorite events every year, right? So I was missing this to happen. So I'm so happy that it happens again. And I can see that the one benefit, obviously, that these online events have is that although we cannot meet in, in Dakar, and I usually enjoy a beer or two after the sessions or just like an exchange over lunch or whatever it is around it, but it seems to have the benefit that may, we can meet many more people, right? Usually the groups work pretty much smaller. So now we can have a lot more people included, which is, I think, great. And, and it's, it's such an um, interesting event for me because I had some of the best intellectual discussions actually in this summer school, right? So for me, this is something that I always look forward to. And they have also been controversial, and that's good, right? And in that sense, I'm, I'm sure we'll have controversial discussions. And, and that's, I think, is also what this is about. And I look forward to it. And I look forward to meeting all of you later on. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Raf, and good to see you too. Uh, so as Elisio uh, pointed out, uh, the discussion around uh, the Institute uh, was made possible uh, by the support from the Yoma Dili Foundation. Uh, and Lucy uh, and previously Naomi were at the center of this. Uh, this morning, as I, I was preparing for this institute, one of the things that uh, I did was to read a few of the email communications that I had with Naomi. And it's indeed sad that uh, uh, we lost her. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, some of the last emails I had with her. Uh, I couldn't understand what she was talking about, but she tended to, you know, direct my inquiries to Lucy or to somebody else uh, for, for, for specific things. So for me, it was uh, indeed sad 
to, to lose Naomi. Uh, only a few uh, weeks ago, we were engaged in an experiment when one of the former visiting fellows, uh, Amal Abrado, uh, was in Codestria attempting to help us uh, with one of the major engagements that we had planned to undertake this year. Uh, and uh, I do remember uh, that uh, Amal was introduced to me via email from Naomi. And so it's, uh, it's uh, indeed for us, uh, uh, as it is for you at the center, uh, and indeed perhaps for Lucy uh, at a personal level, because I know you are, you are friends, uh, it is indeed a loss uh, of unimaginable proportion. Um, there are colleagues uh, who go out of their way to make things possible uh, for an organization they did not even need to. Uh, for, uh, for colleagues, academics, whom they did not need to. And Naomi was uh, one such person who went out of her way uh, to engage Codesria with a sense of uh, agency, with a sense of uh, 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 friendship, and uh, with the humility uh, that uh, uh, for us at Codesria actually was uh, extremely notable and impressive. And so uh, if uh, we have no other opportunity, uh, Lucy, to pass, uh, our uh, words of condolence. Uh, uh, please take this as uh, our really, really genuine uh, word of condolence for having lost a colleague, I think, who um, would have made a significant difference was she uh, available today for this institute uh, or uh, was she available in, in, in Codestria because I do recall uh, some of the last times that uh, you were in Codestria. Uh, it was such a moment for inspiration for us, partly because of the discussions we initiated to advance the Institute, but to also expand uh, the partnerships between uh, Codesria, uh, Omodili, and uh, the Center for African Studies. Uh, uh, so I wanted to uh, take uh, an opportunity, Lucy, to, uh, to give you a moment to speak, uh, but also uh, on behalf of, of course, uh, Omodili, but also uh, perhaps uh, on, in your own right uh, as an academic, uh, because uh, uh, for those who do not know, uh, I had the rare privilege of uh, meeting uh, Lucy well before I came to Codestria, uh, when I was uh, at the African Leadership Center uh, in Nairobi, uh, and she was conducting some interesting work uh, all the way to Kisumu in Maseno. Uh, meeting some of our colleagues there who are good friends of mine. Uh, and I don't want to miss uh, the very fact that uh, you may come to us via Omodili, and you may come to us via Basel, but you actually come also as an academic in your own right, uh, who has been engaged with Africa uh, in, in your own right. But perhaps for me to point out that uh, uh, among the, the very few decisions that I made that were, 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 uh, were important was uh, to open the door uh, when you came to, to visit and to talk about what you are doing. And I say so because partly uh, in Africa, we go through the dilemma, African academics go through the dilemma of who to open the door to. Uh, and you, you, you know, you figure out very quickly uh, that there are people who uh, you do not just open the door, they open the world uh, for you in, in, in return. And uh, Lucy, I must say that this has been true of my experience, even though our engagements are not as regular. So please, uh, a moment for you to say something. Thank you so much, um, Godwin, for your extremely kind um, and actually very moving words, both to you, um, Godwin and Elisio also in memory um, of Noemi. I'm slightly at a loss what to say, I must say. I, I, it's very moving what you said, and uh, I do think it's very fitting that um, we commemorate uh, Noemi here, because indeed this really was um, one of the sort of, um, uh, the collaboration with, with Cadesria uh, and the collaboration between the Center of African Studies and Cadesria was at the very heart of the foundation, um, Umudili. Um, and indeed it was our, our kind of programmatic cornerstone 
um, to, with which we begun our activities even, uh, very much due to the vision and the, the determination and persistence also of, of Noemi, um, to initiate um, this collaboration. So it is with huge joy and pride um, and pleasure um, that I am joining you here and uh, I am very, very excited and delighted that um, the summer school, the fourth summer school can take place after, you know, 18 months of global talk turmoil. Um, as Ralf Eder said, it is um, the advantage of that is that more laureates can join, which I think is uh, in many ways also a chance. Um, not only, of course, we would all love to be there together to have these kind of stimulating conversations and, and dialogues um, over lunch, over coffee, um, in the morning, walking to the to to Cadestria. <laughs> um, but there are other spaces of intellectual exchange and debate which which open up um, virtually. So I would like to take this opportunity of thanking um, the Executive Secretary Godwin uh, Murunga um, and thanking um, Ibrahim Wanda and his team at Cadestria for making this possible. As Elisio um, mentioned, we understand how difficult it is to put such a summer school together. And um, it is it is outstanding, actually, the possibilities and opportunities that you are opening up um, through the organization and um, um, the logistical care you put into it, also across um, languages, for instance, which, as we all know, still constitute a very substantial barrier to this kind of intellectual exchange. Um, the summer school, um, in my experience of the last three um, uh, summer schools, and I have absolutely no doubt that this will be the case with this summer school too, um, opens up a very rare space um, of intellectual reflection of curiosity. It's kind of a playground also for intellectual curiosity and debate um, and of critical and rigorous argumentation. Um, and it has been a huge joy in the last three summer schools to, um, to witness the deep engagement of students and scholars across the continent um, with questions of great theoretical pertinence and reflecting these in meaningful and often powerful ways um, and engaging with their own research and empirical um, inquiry. And I have absolutely no doubt that the present laureate, and it's exciting to see that there are so many, um, will <clears throat> experience the same intellectual elation, which um, I witnessed in previous schools, probably also the same frustration, or perhaps one can, um, one can call it productive uh, irritation, <laughs> um, with, the, with the kind of um, theoretical, conceptual, and also methodological um, challenges which will be thrown your way. Um, but uh, have no doubt that uh, this will be a very, very exciting two weeks um, that you are facing. And I would like to wish all the laureates um, the very, very best of luck. And, um, uh, and I'm sure you will come out of it um, with a very um, strong intellectual muscle and with huge joy and also a network with which you can connect up to um, in future years for your exchanges and, and your future career. So thank you again to everyone at Cadestria. Thank you, um, Centre of African Studies for your engagement and, and help. I would also like to thank the whole faculty uh, taking part and wish everybody, all the students and participants, the best of luck. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Lucy, for the kind words too and uh, for the reflections about the, uh, in, uh, the summer school uh, institute. Um, uh, going forward, uh, I would like to
conclude this uh, introductory uh, session uh, by recognizing the contributions of uh, uh, colleagues in Codesria uh, who've uh, supported uh, the work of uh, organizing this institute. I began by saying that uh, Codesria uh, did not uh, very quickly jump onto the virtual option uh, of conducting the institute. Uh, for reasons that are very uh, important to us. As a council, uh, we are set up in part as a political project uh, to facilitate the presence, uh, the visibility, and actually effectiveness of the African voice in global discourses, both on Africa, but also in the world. Uh, to do that, uh, we are hesitant to do it from a narrow nationalistic uh, point of view. Uh, nationalistic in the sense of a narrow nationalism defined by the nation state framework. Uh, we find that a little too restricting, a little too, uh, in, in a sense, it atomizes uh, the knowledge into very narrow frameworks uh, and makes it difficult for us to see how the diversity that is Africa uh, uh, adds up to make a Pan-African world, both Pan-African in terms of continental uh, unity, but also Pan-African to include the diaspora, uh, which remains an effective participant in all developments across the continent at whatever time be it the historic diaspora or the more contemporary diaspora of people who have been driven uh, to many places to work, not necessarily because they have no options at home, but the world has globalized itself and become so cosmopolitan that the old distinctions based on a narrow nationalism do not really reflect the world. And part of the logic of the Codesria uh, uh, story around institutes was to make it possible for African academics to move across the continent, uh, to be able uh, to engage colleagues beyond their universities, beyond their nations, uh, beyond the continent, to be honest, uh, and to develop um, a worldview that reflects Africa as their starting, start, starting point, but embracing the world uh, with the kind of knowledge that they, they, they hold. And so for us, the coronavirus uh, has forced us actually to adopt uh, the virtual system uh, of conducting our institutes reluctantly. Uh, reluctantly because there are serious ped pedagogical constraints uh, that uh, you experience when you are conducting the institute uh, virtually, but also because the very drive for reaching out to the Pan-African world uh, is undermined uh, by the assumption that uh, once we meet on screen, that we have achieved an objective. There are so many spin-off advantages uh, of, uh, of uh, holding an institute face-to-face, -face, be it in Dhaka or anywhere else, that perhaps this particular uh, um, uh, platform uh, cannot afford us. Uh, but recognizing the fact that the virus, uh, the pandemic has been, uh, 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 you know, uh, really life-changing in many places. Uh, recognizing the fact that uh, we need to figure out a way to continue programming uh, uh, while being able to maintain some of the core practices that have enabled Codesca to be what it is. Uh, we decided that uh, we are going to address uh, this uh, platform. And in fact, in the year we have been able to run uh, the Gender Institute uh, and the Governance Institute on a platform like this. Uh, the only dis difference this time is that the number of participants is a lot more <laughs> compared to the Governance Institute and the Gender Institute. And I feel that uh, it allows us to experiment uh, with the with, a, with a, a slightly bigger number of participants and see uh, how it goes. I believe that is the reason why the program was structured the way it was, 
uh, with enough uh, space and time uh, for people to engage uh, the resource persons, uh, the faculty assisting us in the institute, but also enough time to break off and be able uh, to do other things. Uh, in another seven days time, we are also going to hold another conference uh, using a virtual platform and uh, we're constantly experimenting to see how it goes. But at the end of the day, the one thing that uh, I think we are not willing to sacrifice is going to be the possibility of holding this institute again in a face-to-face -face, uh, context. I think that that remains a priority uh, of the council and uh, it is something that we are going to work through. Uh, I'm going into this whole story to say that uh, the staff uh, at Codesria and especially those ones in the training grants and fellowships program uh, have had to learn the hard way uh, how to adjust themselves to a framework of work uh, that uh, is not necessarily what we are used to. And in this regard, our colleague Ibrahim Oanda, uh, who leads the training grants and fellowships program, uh, but also supported by uh, Dominique Sambo, uh, have been very instrumental uh, in making sure that we begin this institute uh, in the manner in which it is organized. And uh, we are confident and happy that they have been able to do this uh, for all of you uh, with limited uh, disturbance. Uh, but also there are other colleagues uh, in the program who I am sure have supported this uh, uh, including um, uh, 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 Hadi Job, uh, who is currently on leave, and uh, I believe uh, uh, Leonid Awa, uh, who is also in the program, uh, plus Dauphin, uh, and uh, Dauphin Juf and, uh, and uh, Emily, uh, both of whom uh, do work with Oanda, but may not have necessarily been involved in the organizing of this particular institute. So. Uh, my way of thanking you very much uh, for the work you've done. But I can also see, I can also see that online we have other Codestria staff uh, and uh, just a quick mention uh, of their names. Uh, I believe that uh, I did see uh, my colleague Ato Onoma online. Uh, he heads the research program, uh, which uh, by definition works collaboratively uh, with uh, the training grants and fellowship program. I think I also saw uh, Bushra Sidi Hida, uh, who works uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the research program too. Uh, and um, I suspect that uh, I might end up missing out on some names, depending on whether they appear on my radar at the moment. Uh, but uh, I had already, of course, mentioned uh, Dauphin, who is in the trainings program. Uh, if I see any other person, I think we will flag, flag them out, but uh, those are the two uh, that I can see uh, at the moment uh, from the research uh, program. Uh, I need to mention that uh, since uh, COVID uh, struck and uh, the training grants and fellowships program uh, was unable to mobilize their work because it involves a lot of travel and it also involves a lot of uh, first-to-first um, uh, -first meetings, uh, we very quickly took a decision to redirect a lot of our energies to, the, to our publications program. Uh, and uh, we asked uh, Ibrahim Oanda uh, to act uh, as the head of the publications program. So Elisio, thank you very much for recognizing the work we are doing. I am always very happy to take the credit uh, without necessarily always saying that uh, the people who actually do the work are the ones I have just mentioned. Uh, and maybe it's an opportunity for me to publicly thank them uh, for the work they have done, especially over the year. Uh, we, we, we really feel glad that we are able to bring all our journals to be up to date, to date and we've been able to accomplish our work in the research program and cross uh, the current strategic plan, which is coming to an end uh, December 2031. Uh, having said those things, I have uh, just a few minutes to uh, flag out uh, or maybe one or two additional uh, things. Uh, the first one uh, is going to be uh, to just, uh, just a very, very, very brief reflection uh, that uh, the summer school has actually come a long way. Um, again, a reminder to switch off your uh, 
uh, yes, please. Uh, um, the summer school has come a long way from 2015. Um, and as I said, this is the fourth edition and uh, we've been able to hold the Institute uh, every two years. Um, the first Institute actually did reflect on interdisciplinary and methodological challenges in African studies. Topical issue, one that uh, should make a difference for the kind of uh, laureates that we seek uh, for the Institute, uh, advanced PhD students. Uh, actually people uh, who I believe are engaged on a day-to-day -day basis in the task of disciplining the data they have collected into a story they want to tell. Uh, and the first institute focused on, on interdisciplinary and methodological challenges uh, in African studies. The second institute zeroed in on area studies, looking at inter interdisciplinarity in area studies. Uh, uh, with, of course, a focus on basic and applied research. And for me, the fact that we are talking in this institute uh, uh, on the normative order in African studies reflects a recurring concern that you can see uh, uh, is, is, is actually a story that the first and second editions of the institute have focused on. The third institute focused on African studies and Africanists, whence the guess. And again, uh, it began to zero in with more specificity uh, on this. Uh, we now, uh, uh, in, the, in this edition of the Institute, uh, we are now looking at the normative order in African studies. And one of the things that I think is important about this Institute is that it has been able to carefully address significant questions that Codesria as an institution has held over a long period of time. Uh, I don't think it's a secret that uh, Codesria has a very a difficult relationship with African studies as it's done in Europe and the US. So I, I think that this is something we can, we know. Uh, and it's not a, a matter of gossip. Uh, you open up the pages uh, of Codesria bulletin and you see the nature of the debates that have occurred from the 19, uh, 19, especially the 1980s, 1990s. Codestria uh, uh, has had a very difficult uh, relationship uh, with African studies as is practiced in Europe and, the, and, 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 um, and, 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 and in, in North America in general, uh, partly because we hardly are afforded a chance to remember that African studies did not originally find its home. Uh, in, in, in North America and in Europe. In fact, the study of Africa in places like Russia dates back way, way long ago in China, uh, in Japan. Uh, uh, the study of Africa and the interest in Africa defined by the very solidarities that were built uh, in the processes of decolonization and all that has a longer history. And indeed, uh, archeologists will tell you uh, that uh, part of the inspiration for the interest in Africa had something to do with historical uh, voyages uh, that existed between places like China, for instance, and, and, and Africa. Uh, and the story of the Indian Ocean hasn't been told fully. Uh, you know, uh, I think recently we were we were tapped into remembering uh, places like Zanzibar and the East African coastline, all the way from Mogadishu down to to Maputo in Mozambique. Uh, with the with the you know uh, uh, the selection of the Zanzibari uh, novelist as a Nobel uh, as a Nobel winner, uh, there is a very long story that ought to be told there. That in many ways, in terms of time span, uh, predates uh, the interest in Africa uh, has, as has been framed from uh, from Europe and North, North America in particular. Uh, but uh, you know. Uh, over time, uh, and perhaps in response to the nature of power relations in the world, uh, we tend to recognize a lot more and tend to engage a lot more African studies as we understand it, having come uh, from uh, Europe in particular in the context of the colonial and decolonization projects. Uh, and as we say, Sabelo will be talking about the, the problematic nature of decolonization and the epistemic consequences 
uh, of that moment. Uh, we, I think, need to remind ourselves that having been born in the context of colonialism, African studies carries with it certain norms uh, that have uh, continued to influence the way African studies is conducted. And that some of those have actually now found themselves and found a home in the continent. Uh, often when you reflect on the experience of African studies in South Africa, uh, in the context of Bantu education, uh, but also in the context of the way the universities are structured in South Africa, uh, you begin to see the very problematic nature uh, in which African studies has been uh, 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 reproduced. And so part of the beauty of this institute has been to allow Codesria and to enable Codesria to engage African studies, not by reproducing the very problematic nature that we all now do understand, but rather to rethink uh, how African studies ought to be thought. Because at the end of the day, while we may have problems with area studies as constituted, while we may have problems with African studies as constituted, we know that other quote unquote regions have been able to assert themselves and transform the way in which they are perceived in the context of area studies, perhaps much better than we have in Africa. And uh, in many senses, Codestria has been uh, uh, almost the lone child in raising key and significant questions about how to rethink African studies so that it does not frame Africa merely as an object of study rather than as uh, an area of study with agency and with an epistemic community uh, in its own right. Uh, too many times we go into meetings and uh, you meet African students trained in France, trained in the US, who do not think that there is an epistemic community on the continent worth, worth engaging. And perhaps one of the difficulties that uh, this particular institute is going to have to confront is going to be in the constitution of African studies, what are the norms that have found their way having you know, this long history from the age of enlightenment all the way to today that need to be directly challenged in a manner that will help African studies too and to not just to, to understand Africa as an object of study, but as a continent with an agency that needs to be respected. Uh, the, the subaltern school, uh, whatever its difficulties, managed to change the narrative uh, about, uh, about India and indeed about Asia in many ways. Uh, the moves that you are seeing in China have transformed the way in which you think about uh, uh, the production of knowledge about China. Uh, and in many cases, when I hear the, the US government saying all the things that it has to say about China, I think part of the difficulty they are confronting is that there is a fully fledged epistemic community uh, in China that is able to articulate the Chinese viewpoint, uh, but also do that while understanding viewpoints from other places. And I think in Africa, uh, particularly from the way we have appropriated and understood African studies, I think uh, there is a lot of ground uh, to be covered. And part of the difficulty, and I feel that this is where the, the call for papers was signaling uh, when it focused on the normative difficulty, is the central role that the notion of objectivity has played uh, in the framing of how you study society. Uh, the age of positivism, the empiricism that it carried, uh, I think has left us a legacy uh, that we in Africa need uh, uh, to, to deal with. Uh, Max Weber, uh, reflecting um, on the issues of his day in his own society, it has been possible for Max Weber to look like he, 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 he understood and was reflecting on the story of the whole world so that a local very specific problem in his locality has intellectually influenced the way we think about the state, about the way we think about bureaucracy, the way we think about the development of capitalism and all that. And I can name a whole range of names. It's almost forbidden in African studies uh, and uh, uh, the laureates in the Institute will perhaps know this. It, it's almost forbidden that you conduct a study in sociology and you don't genuflect before Max Weber, uh, or you don't do it before uh, Michel Foucault. 
uh, Emil de Rennes, you know, and you can mention a whole range of them, most predominantly men, but nevertheless, men who have uh, uh, made us think that uh, you, you don't know unless you have read them. Uh, not, um, you know, uh, a Claude Ake, uh, not uh, an Ifi Amadjume, not a Sheikh Antadiop, you know, uh, somebody uh, who, if you want to talk about uh, uh, creating a paradigm shift, the work of Sheikh Antadiop, you know, did that uh, in ways perhaps that are unparalleled, given his own experience as a student in France and given the work that he was doing and given the difficulties of financing that he went through. Uh, and I feel that it's important that we, at the end of the day, begin to demystify the notion of objectivity, the very idea of their existing value-free knowledge, uh, the very idea that uh, the work of method and methodology is to remove feelings, to remove biases, and to remove all this as you discipline your data in order to tell the story that you want. And in many cases, it's been my reflection that the function of the notion of objectivity in the social sciences has been to create a get, a get that determines whether you pass through to become a recognizable, acceptable, reputable, legitimate historian, uh, political scientist, sociologist, and all that. To create a get that makes it difficult for the work published by Codesia to be recognized globally as useful contribution to knowledge. A get that says, unless you have gone through this university and this school, uh, you haven't been properly trained. And so uh, the agency that we bring to study our own society is in a sense sealed through a range of norms uh, that have existed for such a long time that we hardly pay attention to the fact that those norms in themselves are a product of a particular context, a particular situation, and may not necessarily be relevant in the context in which we are working. And I know a number of African academics who have chosen the, to go against the normative order in African studies. I feel that by signaling to this topic uh, uh, Elisio, uh, Ibrahim, and the team that is organizing wanted to begin a conversation, a difficult conversation to be sure, but a conversation nevertheless that already started, gets muted at times, but it has found always a way of coming back and reasserting itself. And so this institute is an instance where we can also go back and begin to ask what perhaps seem like old questions that have continued uh, to influence the way we think. And the GET does not just serve the function of saving you on the basis of the knowledge you produce and whether it is biased or not. It also is organized around a certain set of very interesting criteria, uh, one of which is rest. And, and I think it needs to be made clear that this has been important. I am a graduate of Northwestern University. Uh, Northwestern University uh, would claim to have one of the longest uh, existing, most profound center for program for African studies. Spent six to seven years there uh, in the heritage of Melville Haskovitz, um, the father of African studies, as they would say. I don't mind that uh, the School of Oriental and African Studies was already engaging in African studies by as early as, uh, as uh, 1917, uh, beginning a reflection on this and that amateur anthropologists, including Africans like the, the late Jomo Kenyatta were schooled in that tradition, both in the context of the London School of Economics, but also in the context of the school of Oriental and African Studies at uh, what was then the Federated London uh, University of London. Uh, one of the key points to make about uh, uh, Melville Haskovitz uh, was the information that now is abundantly available, dismissing W.E.B. Du Bois, dismissing Carter D. Woodson, and 
African American analysts of Africa as not being academic in orientation, as not being intellectual in orientation, as they actually dismiss them as mere activists and using his influence to prevent them from accessing resources to do the work that they were doing. This element of the Constitution of African Studies continues to that. And it's very difficult to find allies, you know, who help uh, negotiate some of these very difficult uh, contexts. So uh, race plays a role, class plays a role. Uh, there is a reason why the, the Manchester School of Anthropology uh, was a more effective one compared to any anthropology produced in the UK in colonial times. Uh, if Oxford and Cambridge University were like the universities, uh, how come that Manchester <laughs> is the place where you go to really begin to think about how knowledge is produced? How come uh, Branislav Malinowski, for instance, uh, operated more at the London School of Economics than at Oxford? And I think I'm signaling the fact that uh, uh, not only does race play a role, uh, that in the context of racial politics, they are also class politics. And they have been central to how African studies uh, is constituted. And so whatever normative aspects that we are going to discuss, I think it's important to reflect uh, on this historical fact. But I'm not going to leave this topic unless I also point out uh, the patriarchal limited, the patriarchal limited, um, uh, the patriarchal dividends uh, that across the board make it more difficult for women to produce knowledge in African studies, irrespective of race. We can do a racial analysis, but irrespective of race, in African studies, it's more difficult for women to produce knowledge about us than it is for the men. And we enjoy patriarchal dividends out of this mainly because of the manner in which knowledge has been constituted and the role in which gender plays. Uh, and actually, uh, in, in the spirit of self-critique, uh, I think that uh, uh, the next session of, the, uh, of this summer school, uh, Elisio and Oanda, uh, it is my challenge to you, I have already shared this with uh, Ibrahim Oanda, that we need resource persons who are female. Uh, I think we're doing badly on that score. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, partly because the manner in which the production of knowledge is structured, it is easy not to see uh, that gap because of the dividends we carry uh, and the way society has structured knowledge production. Uh, and uh, finally, I think that uh, uh, a key element and a key difficulty that we face as producers of, uh, of knowledge in Africa in particular, and, uh, and I feel happy to be saying this at this institute because we haven't had any much trouble in relation to this, is the politics of funding. Politics of funding. Um, uh, and, and, and this is a lot more practical. And, and I understand that the, the call for papers was a lot more focused on the intellectual dimensions of this. Uh, but what objectivity do you carry if you have no autonomy to produce the knowledge you need to produce partly because of who has funded you? Uh, and I have never said this as Kodesu Executive Secretary, I have not mentioned this a lot. Uh, in any institute. I deliberately did not mention it too much uh, in the Governance Institute. I deliberately did not mention it in the Gender Institute. I'm mentioning it in this institute. Uh, 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 acquiring the safety that we have not experienced a similar problem in this institute. Okay. Uh, in 2020 and 2021, Codesria has suffered the consequences of being unable to fund its own work. No African government puts any money in us. We are extremely judicious in the use of resources in the council. At least I can say that uh, for the period within which I have been uh, the Kodesri Executive Secretary. Uh, resources that come in, we account for it to the best of our ability. And we accept questions about how we are using the money both from our funding partners, but also uh, from the members of the Codesria community. We are open to this uh, without. 
But I can tell you that since I became Kodesu Executive Secretary, I have been through eight audits. The first one I didn't perform very well because I'm a historian running a social science organization. So I didn't perform very well. But in none of the subsequent audits have I performed badly. So I learned my lesson from the first institute, from the first uh, audit. Two of those uh, uh, audits have been uh, uh, audits uh, attached to the annual audit of the CAT. And for four years now, for three years now, uh, we've returned audit reports from independent credible auditors uh, with unqualified audit opinion. This is language I have learned as I, I manage the council. And I want to use, I'm using this story to demonstrate the difficulty of talking about objectivity in a context where you cannot find your own work. I have been through two evaluations and I have been through two, um, you know, special audits, you know, audits where somebody thinks there is a problem and then they send a team, they sit in, 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 in Dhaka for a week or two and inspect. And we've returned very good results. Uh, at least they haven't said that we have stolen money uh, and used it for our own purposes to build a house in Nairobi or uh, wherever we come from. But we keep on being audited. And a significant amount of this, the time of the secretariat colleagues is spent servicing audits. <laughs> To the point where the intellectual work, to the point where the intellectual work of the council has suffered irreparably this year because of audits. This is really the 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 the, 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 the gist of it. That if we're going to talk about the normative order in African studies. Uh, the power relationships that define what we do and what we don't have something to do with whether we are able to guarantee autonomy in exchange for integrity of the systems of accounting that we have. But it's become difficult, especially in the Codestria context, to guarantee that the integrity of the systems will give you autonomy and a capacity to conduct the work that you do. So we can have a very successful institute that focuses on the uh, primary intellectual matters that we're talking about. But at the end of the day, there are practical elements of the work that African academics do that impact their capacity to produce knowledge. And I think at the end of the day, we need a reflection on this. If they are unable to travel because of funding, if they are unable to, to read the, the journal that they want because of funding, they are unable to buy the book they need because of funding. It's difficult. Uh, for the period in which we have been in Kodesia, we have moved our bookshop from the little room in Dhaka to an online bookshop. So you can actually purchase the book you want by simply clicking uh, and you get it. We've also moved membership. Uh, a long time ago, you had to send a check the laureates that are attending the summer school, my challenge to you is very simple, and I don't want to turn this into a complaint against funding. If Codesia has to be your institution, you must invest in it. You must invest both in terms of resources, but you have to invest your time, you have to invest your uh, intellectual, your best intellectual work has to be in Codesia. Because if you're seeking to transform the very difficulties we experience in terms of the norms that are built into the production of knowledge about Africa. Your voice is as important in transforming this because there are colleagues in Europe and in North America who genuinely do not know because you haven't spoken, right? And precisely because you haven't spoken, uh, you contributing inadvertently to making it difficult for the African voice to be had, making it difficult for the political project that Codesria is uh, to gain the visibility that we want. So I felt I needed to put this challenge 
in the context of the topic of discussion uh, for this institute, and basically to do a challenge. And my challenge to you, which is a challenge I raised with the Gender Institute and the challenge I raised with the Governance Institute is this. Codestria is going the extra mile to avail to you resource persons whom we know, whom we know that would not be available to you under normal circumstances. Uh, when, we, when we ask uh, Elisio Makamo to participate in a Codestria activity, he has a thousand and one other options. And perhaps often we underestimate the rich experience he carries. And at least I'm not doing this to embarrass you because uh, this, is, uh, this is the truth. Uh, uh, Europe cannot appreciate you more than African academics appreciate you. That's the embarrassing situation we have. Uh, Sabelo, <laughs> uh, our colleague from Zimbabwe, uh, has rich experience. And the fact that you take the choice to be with Codesria means that there is a reciprocity obligation on the side of the laureates. And so um, if we are able through Codesria to bring the best that we can bring as resource persons to the Institute, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be that the laureates take it for granted. Uh, in the Governance Institute, I forced uh, uh, Professor Adebayo Olukoshi to give a lecture, two lectures. I forced him, <laughs> but I, when I came out thinking, did they even see the value of having Professor Olukoshi? Uh, occasionally we ask Professor Suleiman Bashir Jha, uh, somebody who has options anywhere in the world at any time, Six months to his uh, to a particular event, Suleiman Bashir Jan will tell you, my calendar is full, and that he makes the priority to come and join Codesria and do all these things. I think it's absolutely important that the laureates understand the meaning of it. Uh, so uh, I wanted to conclude on that point and to say that there are a whole range of things that obviously will come up at the practical level that are important for the topic that we are discussing. And I want to wish all of you a rich experience with the Institute. I want to hope that all of you are going to benefit out of this Institute in ways perhaps that you wouldn't have if you are sitting in your own corner in Kampala, in Maputo, in Ibadan, or even in Dhaka. I am hoping that out of this Institute, you get the inspiration to be a contributor to changing the discourse about Africa. Because at the end of the day, this institute does serve that particular purpose. I want to conclude by thanking all of you for listening to me. Uh, I was allocated up to around uh, uh, 10, 15 Dhaka time. It's roughly 10, 12. So I will uh, 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 call uh, on, um, I, I think I will hand this over back to Oanda. I will be shadowing the institute in the background. I won't be making too much noise unless I feel uh, pushed to do it. Uh, and I want to thank you for your time to participate in the institute. Uh, thank you very much. And back to Ibrahim Wanda. Uh, 